I think this will be a really organic conversation. So I feel like we will have a good banter about, you know, back and forth about awareness, yeah. mindfulness, techniques, you yeah. know, behaviors and thought processes that may not serve us, what we can do about it, and then some tips. Yeah. Um, authenticity comes from, I feel like the authenticity comes from these conversations. <laughs> So today I'm speaking with Layla. Layla is with NovaQuest Consulting. I'm going to have all her contact information later on in this video or at the bottom of this post. You'll be able to find all of that information. And so uh, and my name is Walter Murray. So this is our second conversation. And I find it really, really compelling having these conversations with Layla because she shares insights on workplace stressors, right? So Layla, tell us a little bit about some of the problems or the main issue that you target your services. What is it you try to fix or help? Yeah, well, thanks for uh, the conversation again, Walter, and having me on. I'm Layla Keith, and I'm the CEO of NovaQuest Coaching. I founded NovaQuest Coaching, and after 20 plus years in corporate and experiencing burnout myself, I wanted to help women of color 30 plus to navigate career milestones, but also those women who are experiencing burnout or trying to recover from burnout or trying to not experience burnout again if they've already experienced it. So that's what led me in my you know 20 plus years in corporate and Fortune 500 to start my own coaching business to help and support women. And as Walter said, you know what brought us to this conversation today is the prevalence. The prevalence of workplace burnout is just soaring. And one of the things that Walter and I were talking about is do people know they're in it? when they're in it. So we wanted to talk today about how to identify burnout first and foremost, and then what do you do if you're in it? If you're in the thick of it, what are some of the techniques you can use to, and solve to help yourself recover from burnout? And then what can you do in being stick in your behaviors and mindset to help you prevent getting there again? Right. So that's why we're having this conversation today. And, and it's timely. I mean, there's a lot happening in the world, but I'll tell you, one of the things that also had me focus on at top of the year was Gallup's State of the Globe Workplace uh, report that they did in 2022. Mm -hmm. And the numbers were just mind boggling to me that one, three in 10 employees in the US are experiencing burnout, three in 10. That's, that's what it was in 2022. Yeah. So that's quite high and it's it was three in 10 always or very often feeling burned out at work. Mm -hmm. That in itself is a high number. And then 60% of people are emotionally detached at so, the work. And that was part of the report that was, was mind boggling to me and, and what that can lead to. So let me interject for a moment, because those, those statistics are really mind boggling, totally flooring me. Because if it is that prevalent, why is it not more easily recognized? Yeah. Because it's there all the time. It seems thirty. If you say thirty percent of people in the workplace are suffering burnout, that's a high percentage. Yep. And sixty percent are disconnected, which is probably some form of burnout. Yeah. Right? If it's that prevalent, why is it not more easily recognized? What are we missing? Yeah, great question. I think one of the things is the support system. Mm -hmm. You know, now that, you know, these reports are coming out, I think they, there can sometimes be a gap. And the other thing that I specialize in is um, is executive organizational culture. So sometimes there's a gap, mm -hmm. a large gap between the actual employee experience and the perception of the employee experience by the C-suite. Right. The right. gap between. So these reports are allowing us to close the gap to see what is actually the employee experience and also providing a voice. A lot of times there's fear-based behavior and we're afraid to say, I need help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're afraid to be reprimanded. We're afraid of under-delivering. We're afraid that this is going to have repercussions on how we're perceived by our colleagues, by our manager. And sometimes your manager's pushing you so hard that perhaps you don't feel that you have the support to have a voice to say, I'm struggling. Yeah. Sometimes it's not recognized in the workplace because managers and leaders don't want to recognize it. 
Yeah. Here's what I mean. Here's what I mean by that, right? Managers and leaders are under a lot of pressure to perform, right? You know, deadlines to meet, targets to, to reach, um, return on investment numbers. You got stakeholders internally, external stakeholders, investors. You got all of these pressures, right? To 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 produce results. You get so focused on results that you lose track of the the employee, the team member who is supposed to help you get those results. You don't have time to stop and think about the soft science of emotional well-being. You want you just want performance. Get me that report on my desk by Monday morning because I've got my boss breathing down my back and he's got his board of directors breathing down his back. We don't have time to think about how you feel emotionally, you know. And so I think we don't, as leaders, sometimes we just don't want to recognize it because it represents a disruption in our production workflow. No time for that. We got reports to get done, budgets to meet. And I think that's probably part of what's driving the fact that people don't recognize it. It's not like they don't recognize it. I think they do but they don't want to stop to address it. Does that make it could sense? be a combination of right, alternate. Right, right, and right, it could right. be a combination right. and it could be the culture of the organization is performance results driven, which often, and, and by the way, burnout happens in higher likelihoods in the healthcare industry, you know, very results, sales results driven, pressure, timing, quarterly, you know, or fiscal, you know, timelines that you have to hit. Mm -hmm. Goals you have to hit, KPIs you have to hit, very mm -hmm. stressors, right? right? For those leaders and you know their support teams, yeah. and so sometimes there isn't the culture of the organization is not one that provides support for burnout. Sometimes they're unaware that that many of their employees are experiencing, but some of the onus falls on the employee also to ask for help, mm -hmm. and sometimes by the time you're in the thick of it. You, it's affecting your productivity. So they're not even aware because you haven't voiced or asked for support. And so how is that being perceived? Right. So it's a two-way so two street. It's a two-way street. It's and it's but also it's the psychological safety that the employee must be able to have to have that conversation with their boss, thereby providing a culture where employees feel psychologically safe to share if they're having some struggles with their well-being and balance their work-life balance right so the main thing is what does this look like so what does we know i know because i experience it but what does burnout look like right so one of the things is let's help people identify what it is yeah so one of the things that triggered for me was the loss of motivation feeling kind of hopeless like no matter what i did i was going to be in the same place every day mm -hmm. dreading going to work every day mm -hmm. not being able to sleep uh, it definitely can affect your sleep on your wheels are turning yeah. um, easily overwhelmed. And because of that yeah. agitation and irritability, yeah. I was snapping at <laughs> my friends, my loved ones, people at work. Sometimes I felt like I didn't recognize myself, this irritability and feeling like I just was not well. I had a sense of malaise where I just wasn't feeling good. I had tension. I had headaches. Um, I gradually was losing focus and my ability to concentrate. Um, I had diminished pride at work. Yeah. You know, I didn't have the same gusto about my projects that I did. I was losing sight of myself and my goals. Mm -hmm. um, and I was feeling really drained, really, there's really lot, drained. There's a lot, there's a lot there, uh, Layla. So, so, yeah. so it begs the question, right? If there are all of these signs that signal burnout, is it that people experience the signs, but don't tag the, don't add the tag burnout to it? They they feel all of what you feel, what you what you described. They feel lack of motivation. They feel agitated, but they don't know why. They don't know what is causing it. I didn't put it together to realize yeah. I was burned out until my doctor said, "Knock it off." Yeah, <laughs> and said, "Women your age." Mm -hmm. I was in my late forties when this happened. Women your age. Mm -hmm have heart attacks, strokes, cardiovascular, mm -hmm. you know, risks. Mm -hmm. You could have the higher risk for type 2 diabetes, inflammatory disease, mm -hmm. um, which can also debilitate your immune system. All of these culmination of things, I didn't put it together. It was like, you're burned out. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling you out. 
Mm -hmm. I'm pulling you out for six weeks to recover. Mm -hmm. He recommended also I get a therapist to talk through coping mechanisms, which I did. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a wonderful blend of finding a career coach like myself and someone who works with women and or men mm -hmm. to help you navigate these milestones and find ways to work through a better work-life balance, but teaming up with a therapist also to mm -hmm. deal with some of these mechanisms and techniques and stressors. You might find there are other stressors identifying these stressors that a therapist can help you with. So it's a beautiful blend of the person helping you on the career side and the person helping you with your mental health. It's a wonderful, for me, it was a great balance. And I always recommend people to get a checkup. Like we check our, listen, we check the oil on our car, right? right? Every quarter, we need a checkup. Yeah. So, you know, don't let it get to the point where you are in desperate need for balance in your life and wellness and wait to those isolated events. Why not have a checkup? Yeah, all throughout yeah. right yeah, that's a good so point. That's a good it's point. i didn't know all of those things i didn't know i was being irritable i yeah. knew i was stressed out and i was anxious and that's why i wasn't sleeping but the lack of focus and concentration and me feeling feeling like my throat chakra not being able to express myself was having an impact not mm -hmm. being able to effectively communicate in meetings i didn't make the connection right. that all of these symptoms were burnout yeah well you know it's a good point because it, it, like you said, it works. It works. It's a two-way street, right? The, yeah. the the individual needs to be able to recognize those signs, put it together. But again, from my perspective, in terms of leadership and management, you know, there's a thing that we talk about. We we, we talk about strategically engaging your your team members, right? And mm -hmm. to strategically engage your team members is to be sure to put them, not just give them tasks to do and and, and responsibilities to perform but put them in the best position to accomplish success in the tasks that they have been given, right? Or the roles that they've been given. That's strategically engaging people. And I think from what, from what I'm hearing from you is that one of the ways that we could strategically engage is when we give people uh, roles to perform, expectations of outcomes, that we also have a piece that gives them that freedom to say, hey, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. You know, like maybe a check back the way, the same way we would check on a project progress. Let me check on you, right? So not only am I checking on how was the report coming along, how are you coming along? You know, and that way we kind of close that circle where we don't we don't over focus on just the report and the project and the and the targets, but we also focus on the person who is supposed to deliver those for us. And I think. That's a that's a great lesson that you talked about. So so managers and leaders need to be able to identify those signals and say, you yeah. know, I need to probably check in with Joe, you know, yeah, you know, and, and see what's going on with Joe. Forget the report, forget the, the the fiscal targets and budgets. Hey Joe, hey Jeffrey, how you doing? You know, yeah, yeah. There's you know building trust with your team. Mm -hmm. is critical for leaders. Mm -hmm.